Hello everyone and welcome back to another anatomy tutorial. This is Dr. Ayan from the Veterinary Anatomy channel. Today we will start dissecting the forelimb of the horse, starting with the lateral shoulder muscles. So we will dissect the muscles which we can find on the lateral aspect of the shoulder region, including the shoulder joint muscles and other muscles which we cut to be able to remove the forelimb completely from the trunk. So let's get started. Okay, before we start talking about the muscles of the shoulder joint of the horse, so let's uh, discuss and, and talk about the some muscles which we cut to be able to remove the forelimb completely from the trunk. So here we have a lateral view of the forelimb of the horse, where we have the scapular region in this area here. Here is the location of the humerus, radius and ulna from here down. Again, it's a lateral view. Here is cranial and here is cauda. So in the cranial aspect there, we can find the first muscle which we, we, we cut is the omotransversarius muscle. So this is the omotransversarius muscle which extends between the transverse process of the cervical vertebrae up to the, in all animals, acromion. But here in the horse, as you can see, and as you know, there is no acromion. If you look at the scapula here, and this is a lateral view of the scapula, in the middle of the scapula here, we have the scapular spine. In all other animals, at the distal end of the scapular spine, we have a projection here, a process called the acromion. The acromion in the horse is absent. That's why the omotransferxarius muscle doesn't insert to the acromion, but it inserts to the fascia located in this area here and at the same time this muscle omotransversarius muscle fuses with the cleidobrachialis muscle so here we have the cleidobrachialis muscle which is part of the brachiocephalic muscle the brachiocephalic muscle has three parts in all animals in the horse there is only two parts the cleidobrachialis and the cleidomastoideus to the mastoid process of the skull in the horse. So the cleidobrachial starts from the clavicular insertion, which is located just between the cleidobrachialis and cleidomastoideus, and inserts, as you can see here, to the cranial surface of the humerus. So if we look at this humerus in the lateral view, exactly this is how the humerus located inside this forelimb. So the Cleidobrachialis inserts to the cranial surface and to the humeral crest, to the humeral crest here. Uh, after that, let me just try to move these muscles to the side and talk about other muscles. And now we will start talking about the muscles of the shoulder joint, starting with the lateral group of muscles. So again, this is uh, the location of the scapula here, as you can see. And here, from the scapular spine up to the deltoid tuberosity, we can find the deltoid muscle. So this muscle here is the deltoid muscle. Normally, in all animals, it has two, according to some anatomists, two parts, the scapula part and the acromial part. Again, in the whole, there is no acromion. That's why there is no acromial head of the deltoid muscle. Only the scapular head or scapular part of the deltoid muscle. Origin insertion of this muscle, as we mentioned, the scapular part originates from the scapular spine, from the scapular spine here and inserts to the deltoid tuberosity, which is located on the lateral surface of the humerus in the horse here. This is the deltoid tuberosity. From the scapular spine, this is what we can palpate here, scapular spine up to the, if we follow it, I can't feel it here, I can't palpate it. This is the deltoid tuberosity of the humerus. Innervation of this muscle, this muscle is innervated by the axillary nerve, axillary nerve, which we are going to look at later from the medial side. So this one is the deltoid muscle, scapular part. If we move uh, in front, above the scapular spine here, we have a big muscle 
called the supraspinatus muscle. So this is the supraspinatus muscle. The supraspinatus muscle, again, originate from the supraspinatus uh, supraspina uh, spinous, sorry, supraspinous fossa. So from this highlighted in green here, supraspinous fossa. This is the origin of the supraspinatus muscle and inserts to the greater tubercle of the humerus. Where the greater tubercle of the humerus? Again, it's located on the lateral surface. This is the greater tubercle, which is divided in the uh, horse into two parts, cranial part and caudal part, and this one here, the supraspinatus muscle inserts to the cranial part of the greater tubercle. At the same time, it gives also branch to the lesser tubercle, to the lesser tubercle in the horse. Again, this is the supraspinatus muscle from the, let's just put it next to the forelimb, from the supraspinous fossa, to the cranial part of the greater tubercle and partially to the lesser tubercle. If we put them down like this, so now under the deltoid muscle, and we are going to dissect it, of course, we can find this big muscle. So here, from here up to the humerus, this is the infraspinatus muscle. The infraspinatus muscle originates from the infraspinous fossa here, highlighted in pink here, the infraspinous fossa, and inserts, as you can see here, to the caudal part of the greater tubercle of the humerus. Okay? This is the infraspinatus muscle. From the infraspinous fossa of the scapula to the caudal part of the greater tubercle of the humerus. Both, actually, the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus muscles are innervated by the suprascapular nerve, which we are going also to dissect later, comes from the brachial plexus. Okay? Good. Now let's move to the caudal aspect of the shoulder joint in this area here. So, the huge muscle located in the angle, angle between the scapula and the humerus is the triceps brachii. Triceps brachii. So the triceps muscle has from the name three heads. The lateral head of the triceps brachii, long head, and the medial head on the medial surface. So let's start with the long head of the triceps brachii. The long head of the triceps brachii, as you can see here, starts from the caudal border of the scapula. Let's look at the scapula one more time. Here you will find that the long head of the triceps brachii starts from this area, the caudal border of the scapula, and inserts, as you can see here, to the olecranon. So the long head of the triceps inserts to the olecranon. Now moving to the lateral head of the triceps, uh, if you dissect more here, you will find that the lateral head originates from the lateral, proximal lateral surface of the humerus, from this area here, proximal lateral surface of the humerus and inserts to the same point or same bone, same uh, uh, one here, the olecranon tuberosity. The olecranon tuberosity. This is the lateral head. The medial head, which we are going to see later, originates from the proximal medial surface of the humerus, proximal medial surface, and inserts also to the olecranon, to the olecranon. All heads of the triceps brachii are innervated by the radial nerve. Radial nerve, which if you want to see the radial nerve, you have to dissect and move the, here, move the lateral head and you will find the nerve just under it there. This is the radial nerve. Gives branches to all three heads before moving down for the innervation of 
other extensor muscles of the digits and carbos. What is the function of the triceps brachii? If we consider the long head of the triceps brachii, the function in this case is a flexor, a flexor of the shoulder joint and extensor of the elbow joint, while the lateral and the medial head of the triceps are only extensors of the elbow joint, doesn't have anything to do with the shoulder joint. So contraction of the long head will move the scapula toward the humerus in this area, reduce the angle between the two bones, so that means it's a flexor of the shoulder joint, and at the same time it will pull like the lateral and medial heads, pull the olecranon up, and so the elbow joint will be extended. So extensors of the elbow joint. This is here the triceps brachii muscle. Now if we move uh, to this area, you will find another muscle. Uh, it's uh, relatively uh, flat, especially in other animals and here in the horse, located on the long head of the triceps brachii. This is here the tensor muscle of the antibrachial fascia. Tensor muscle of the antibrachial fascia originates from the caudal border of the, uh, of the scapula and at the same time, I don't know if we remove it completely here. Let's just take this muscle up. So this is the latissimus dorsi. So this muscle originates also from the latissimus dorsi and moves down and inserts to the antibrachial fascia, which we dissected here. You can see part of it. It's a very strong fascia, covers the muscles located in the antibrachial region. This is the antibrachial fascia. So the tensor muscle of the antibrachial fascia inserts to the olecranon and to the fascia antibrachialis or the antibrachial fascia. So what is the name of this muscle again? The tensor muscle of the antibrachial fascia. From the name, we know the function plus extensor of the elbow joint. Okay, now we finish this. Before we stop for more dissection, let me just mention this muscle, which we also cut to be able to remove, uh, to be able to remove the forelimb completely from the trunk. This is the latissimus dorsi, which originates from the lumbosacral uh, lumbo, lumbothoracic fascia, lumbothoracic fascia answers to the teres major tuberosity, teres major tuberosity, that tuberosity found on the medial surface of the humerus, as you can see here, this is the insertion of the latissimus dorsi. Here, to be able to see the muscles which we talked about, we also cut and removed the trapezius muscle, which inserts, uh, you know, to the scapular spine, with the, you know, here we're talking about two parts of the trapezius muscle, the first one thoracic part and the cervical part. We removed both of them to be able to see the muscles which we talked about before. So here we dissected some more, and in this case we dissected the deltoid muscle. If you remember, we say that we have the scapular part of the deltoid muscle here. So we dissected and move it to the side, as you can see here we can now really see the insertion or the tendon of the infraspinous or infraspinatus muscle inserts to the uh, greater tubercle here of the humerus. And in this angle, you know, from between the scapula, the caudal border of the scapula and the caudal surface of the humerus, here we can see this muscle here, this muscle here. So this is the teres minor muscle. The teres minor muscle originate from the distal caudal border of the scapula there, the distal caudal border of the scapula, here in this area, let me show you the bone itself. So here, if we put the scapula like this, so we are talking about this area here, the distal caudal border of the scapula, and the teres minor muscle, in this case, inserts to the lateral surface of the humerus, uh, uh, proximal to the deltoid tuberosity. Let me show you again the bone here, exactly to this area here, 
is the insertion of the teres minor muscle. So teres minor muscle, teres minor muscle um, is innervated by the axillary nerve, the axillary nerve. So in total, just to remind you, the axillary nerve uh, innervates uh, the teres major muscle, teres minor muscle, and the deltoid muscle in this case. Okay, so let's put the deltoid muscle in its place again here and move to this area here. We dissected the lateral head of the, uh, we dissected the lateral head of the triceps brachii and cut it in the middle and move it to the side. In this case here, we can again see the radial nerve. This is the radial nerve we described before which gives you no know, branches for the innervation of all heads of the triceps brachii, okay? And if we move the lateral head to the side as we did this here, we can see this huge muscle here. This is the brachialis muscle. This is the brachialis muscle. The brachialis muscle originates from the caudoproximal service of the, caudoproximal service of the humerus, the proximal service of the humerus and inserts to the medial service of the radius to the medial service of the radius and if we put the bones together here you can understand how the muscle moves actually from this area along to be inserted to the medial service of the radius and that's why the brachialis muscle moves inside the musculo, what's called the musculospiral groove. The musculospiral groove starts from here and moves all the way to the medial surface. This muscle, the brachialis muscle, is responsible for the flexion of the elbow joint. Flex, flexion of the elbow joint, so flexor of the elbow joint. The brachialis muscle uh, is innervated by uh, partially, you know, the musculocutaneous nerve and also from the radial nerve as you can see here this is the brachialis muscle this is the brachialis muscle let's put it again in its position before so we are planning now to move to the medial uh, service of the forelimb or of the shoulder of the anti of the the anti the, the brachial region uh, and they take the muscle there but before we move there uh, let me just tell you that we can see even the lateral view here we can see part of the uh, biceps brachii or biceps brachii so this is the biceps brachii muscle which originate normally from okay, I don't know if we can see it here so originate exactly from the supraglenoid tubercle let me just show you again this is the scapula lateral view and this big tubercle in this area here is the supraglenoid. This is the glenoid cavity and this is the supraglenoid tubercle and this is the origin of the biceps brachii. Okay? After it originates from here, it moves, let me just put the humerus uh, here, you will find and I will show you from the media service again that the tendon moves here inside the intertubercle groove or what's called the bicipital groove. So let's, this is the cranial surface of the humerus and this is where the tendon of the biceps brachii moves down, down and finally this muscle, the biceps brachii inserts to the one the uh, radial tuberosity, this is the radial tuberosity, which, which is located here craniomedially, radial tuberosity, to, uh, to the medial uh, collateral ligament, medial collateral ligament of the elbow, and I will show you later the lateros fibrosus, which is very important, and uh, let me now move to the media service, and I will see you later.